Welcome to uh, chat number 18 of What Does Nature Mean to You? Um, and tonight um, I am joined by um, Isaac Kenyon, um, who is also known as Mr. Enthusiasm. Um, he's an adventurer, um, a trustee for MIND, uh, the mental um, health charity. Um, just seen <laughs> joining me it's early yes we're starting at 5 30 today and <laughs> not 8 30 um <laughs> fitting in with isaac and it means i get the night off which i'm quite happy about um so yeah um he's an adventurer trustee for a mind mental health charity um is uh, a, a positive motivational speaker um and um and many other things as well, an ocean rower, um, a world record holder of indoor rowing um, and uh, and lots of other things. So hopefully he will join us soon and um, we'll be able to get him on and get him to talk about what nature means to him. So while we wait for um, Isaac to join us, um, let me just tell you who we've got for the rest of the week um, lined up. So um, tomorrow night, my friend um, Leanne, um, who works with young people out in nature, um, forest school, um, youth mental health projects um, and she's also training to be a forest bathing guide so excited to talk to her. Um, Saturday really excited I've got uh, Margaret uh, from the Frazzled Cafe um, which we'll tell you more about on Saturday so excited about that um, but I can see that Isaac has just joined the conversation so Isaac I don't know if you have got the option to uh, request to join the live chat and I'll be able to accept you in if not I'll figure out how to invite you um, and then get you to introduce yourself um, yeah, and then Sunday as well. Well, I remember Sunday, um, I've got two chats on Sunday. Sunday morning, um, talking to Nature Connections India, um, and Sunday night, talking to Make It Wild UK. So, um, a busy week. Um, but let's see, let's see if we can get um, Isaac in. I've also figured out a way to download these videos and upload them up onto YouTube. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> Isaac is here. Hello, you are in. You're sideways and in the dark. I'm sideways. <laughs> I was trying to do it. Okay, here we are. Brilliant. <laughs> we can't see you too well because you're still quite darkly lit. But you, you might want it that way. Is yeah, that why fine? It's so dark because um, I, I, the light the lights are on where I am. <laughs> What's that about? I don't know. <laughs> That's so strange. Um, <laughs> if we can get you near a lamp or something. Yeah, that's. Oh, that's better. Is that better? That's okay, we'll better. do it. Yeah, we'll do it here. Okay, great. <laughs> is that you um, standing in an uncomfortable I've position? I've got my lights. Up, um, okay, we'll just go with this. <laughs> as long as you're comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. Okay, standing is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Isaac. Thanks for joining me. Um, I know we spoke a while ago all about nature, but not with an audience. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is, yeah, I guess this is uh, the new virtual way of doing things, isn't it? Uh, live live little chats and, and uh, the new way of conferences and all those things. So, um, yeah, thanks for everyone for joining, I guess, uh, and just listening to our chat about nature and um, why it's great. <laughs> well, I was, I was trying to introduce you, um, but you do so many things, so maybe you could introduce yourself. <laughs> sure thing. Um, yeah, I do a fair few bits and pieces. Um, load of uh, different uh, sort of trades I guess and um, so my professional work is um, an energy analyst um, and I work in the energy transition at the minute so sort of decarbonizing and and working on um, just trying to improve, improve uh, our, our way of uh, getting energy to everybody in a sustainable way which then ties in quite nicely with my sort of hobbies and adventures which are I just love doing adventures um, outdoors anything outdoors related um, because it helps clear my mind and it also gives me a bit of purpose in life and it helps me like motivate and inspire myself as well as others um, so I've done a few adventures over the years for list loads of different causes um, I like to do a bit of philanthropy because I feel like if I'm going to do something I might as well do it to help someone so at the end of the day it's all about like a big team effort isn't it so um, I've done a few adventures um, in the past um, I've swam the English Channel in a relay um, I've rowed across the Atlantic Ocean in a team of four. Uh, I climbed Kilimanjaro in, I think, four days. Um, I broke a world record for a longest continual row before, which is like four days long. Um, yeah, just quite a few little, basically loads of challenges. 
but amongst all that i like to do a lot of micro adventures and these these are kind of my my passion hobbies um just getting out there and uh, and then just enjoying what we have around us even you know I, I live in hertfordshire and even in hertfordshire you can find some really great spots um to, to, to kind of in, immerse yourself in inspire yourself and uh, and motivate as well as uh find your own little adventure and um, doesn't have to be as big as rowing the atlantic or anything like that but it can be just as small as well um and one of the main reasons i got driven into doing all these adventures and outdoors and spending a lot of time outdoors is because I was uh, having a bit of trouble with my mental health. And um, I found that actually the outdoors was uh, where I was starting to get my own natural therapy. Um, I didn't actually go and get any proper help uh, or anything with that. I just found that when I was going out, out outside and stepping outdoors or doing anything outdoors related, like running or swimming or rowing, whatever it was, I found that I feel better. And what happened is I think during the sort of the, the world we're living in now where the technology is just pushing and pumping out um, so much screen time into our lives that we're just, you were just kind of sedated and sitting down watching screens all the time. We don't actually, you know, fulfill our inner, inner chimp, our, our actual human. So I, I found actually that I got kind of pushed into this hobby out of, one an enjoyment but also kind of a bit of a necessity for for mental health and that leads to why i am heavily involved in sort of mental health side of things um and i i like to explore that relationship a lot because i've you know i've got lived experience as well as also a passion a passion for helping uh, helping others so i became a trustee of the um the mind um charity which is um, in Hertfordshire, based in Hertfordshire, and it's been a massive steep learning curve. Um, sitting on a board where there's, you know, quite a few experienced people, but I'm I'm learning a lot and uh, I'm trying to apply it into my my everyday life and and try and make a difference there. So, yeah, that's a roundup of various different things. <laughs> and you also have a um, uh, um, project adventure and um, blokes on spokes. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the name, great name. <laughs> yeah, so um, Blokes and Spokes is a, is a project that is, again, another tie-in with my adventure, but this time um, it's, it's, it's to do with the outdoors, it's cycling across the UK, and um, we're looking actually to do a world's first as a team of four, and we all came together with the, the idea of preserving green spaces and national parks, um, like I can't imagine a world where I wouldn't be able to, you know, walk into a green space and it's just like polluted with loads of buildings and, 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 and people and not actually having that sort of quiet zone where you can just listen to birds or nature um, and just have a walk or something like that. And um, for, for a lot of people, especially in London, that the opportunity is not there. And um, the rate, the population is expanding, the amount of building, we're, we're, you know, we're growing into these green spaces, easing into them. Because not only are we um, building on them, we're also from building and creating more population, there's more demand for food. So then the farming comes into it. And then the farming to supply the food for us is uh, taking over sort of these raw natural landscapes. Um, so we're looking to raise a lot of money for the National Park Foundation, which is a new charity that established last year that um, supply. Oh, we lost you. Is that me? Or is that Isaac's connection? Anyone watching, let me know. Is that me or is that, <laughs> is that Isaac? Something's dropped out. It's the first time it's happened to one of these. Oh. <laughs> let me see. Um, oh yeah, we've completely lost Isaac. Oh no, oh, hopefully he'll come back. Just want to get into questions and asking him more um so i'm just gonna um sit and wait here because i kind of want to what i've been doing with these videos is um or these conversations is having the live chat um but then saving them afterwards so i kind of don't want to leave this and start again because we can save it all in one go then so let's just see isaac's coming back now and, and hopefully uh, we there are. we go we lost you you're back yeah, I think, uh, it was the signal surprisingly <laughs> um, in Hertfordshire, the, the wi-fi is not that great even though it's like close to all the cities um but yeah i've actually had better wi-fi out on the top of a mountain than in my house here um, so, yeah 
I, what I was talking about was Blokes on Spokes and uh, the passion is for the national parks, the charity that we're raising money for and um, funds conservation across all national parks. And it's just to highlight the need of green spaces because a lot of people, I think, in, the, in this pandemic have realised that how important it is just to go for a walk in a little park or something when you're stuck indoors all day. The rate we're going in this world, most things are being done on the computer and that could be it. You only got those little tiny parks to go to and they might even disappear. So it's all about, I think, in, in, our, in, our, in our sort of mission uh, is to sort of kind of change public perception of how important it is maybe to not build so much on green spaces, maybe think differently, do vertical farming where you can build, build up instead or um, building on brownfield sites instead of greenfield sites. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but in, in the longer term, it's very important. Like future generations, you know, at, at the rate we're going, we're, you know, we, we're eating into these spaces and they, they, they might not be there for everyone to escape. And there's a lot of people I've spoken to as well as people, researchers and scientists that talk about the science behind um, nature and mental health and how they're both entwined. They're very important for just everybody's well-being, and that's why we're trying to to protect that because we want to make sure that future generations have good well-being. Yeah, what strikes me, I'm always saying this because I'm, I'm always being struck in these conversations with the connecting dots. But but what mm. what seems to come through from all of this is nature is good for our well-being. That's then good for nature. If we're connected, we're protecting it, and then and that that cyclical thing, and then equally how we manage our food how we manage our cities like everything is so interlinked um and it just seems so obvious and yet so far removed from the model that we've been working on and, and still seem to be working on um, but there are movements of change and there are people like yourself that are are trying to instigate that and and that's really exciting yeah, I think um, there there is more and more need need of, of it, and there's also a higher and higher amount of people are saying things. And um, I think you know that that the, there was people twenty, thirty years talking about all this stuff, maybe a hundred years ago talking about this stuff, but they weren't. It wasn't an, a problem until you start realizing you're stuck inside a box and you're staring at a screen and you're not getting your human nature. And you're not getting that green space and that, that clear mind. When that starts hitting you, that's when it becomes a critical problem. I mean, the rise in mental health cases, suicides are absolutely like just going through the roof right now um, in this pandemic. Um, and that's just, you know, I think early warning signs. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's definitely come up again in these chats as well. And it's something that we can't ignore. Um, um, I guess then sort of listening to all of that and, and you know, it's so clear you're, the importance of nature in your life and the work that you're doing with it. Um, let's take it back to kind of before all of that um, and what your earliest memory is of connecting to nature in some way, if, if there is one. Oh, yeah. Um, I was pretty lucky uh, as, a, as a child. Um, I, I guess I was quite protected by my parents. They were very... They they didn't like me much going out into the parks that were uh, where I was from in Luton because uh, you know it, it's not quite as safe as people would think um, for young kids to be out there. Um, but they would take me to these like wild places, these national parks. So I, I remember specifically a camping trip my dad took me on um, in Snowdonia, and um, you know he was teaching me fishing there and things like that. And that 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 to me. Um, kind of cemented that sort of love for the outdoors because I, I you know you, I'm kind of in a city town type place and then suddenly you're just amongst all these huge mountains in Snowdonia the lakes and it's a complete landscape change and everything starts to be forgotten but I, I like when I'm there I just feel immersed every time and that same feeling I got when I first went is the same feeling I get every time I go into a national park like that I, I still, I just feel the same sort of awe about it. And so, yeah, I think that was my earliest memory and I, I, st I keep it all the time. Wow, what a memory. <laughs> yeah, <it's been> fun. <laughs> um, and do you think that then influenced your um, turning to it in times of, of need? Your, you know, as you said, uh, on a mental health basis, do you, what, what made you know that that would help you? Or Yeah, I, I guess it's just kind of being self-aware. Um, 
so like just trying to take yourself away from all those tasks and things that you've got in your mind so um with i guess with technology and things that it's really quick to just to, to fill up the head the headspace you know you're just filling it up with with whatever's thrown at you like for instance right now like you you might be listening to this on 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 the this uh this like instagram live and at the same time you're getting notifications popping up on your phone you're reading those at the same time and then you before you know you're doing four things at once but in your head now i found that when i took myself away from technology just to walk i could really start to to, like prioritize like things and what was important and clear my mind and then from doing that i noticed that my i actually just felt like healthier better i was smiling more you know just natural endorphins all these things coming back and that's when i've just it's just been self-aware and just realizing when, when do i feel good and when do i not feel good i mean i don't feel good when i've got 15 emails on the go at the same time but I do feel good when I'm walking in the woods. So I know it's, it's, a, it's like a clear like therapy or I guess, or like good thing there. Yeah. 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 I noticed yeah. it. Um, uh, actually having one of those good old Fitbits that suddenly you're electronically connected again. Um, and I had a day in particular, there was some really positive stuff going on where I had a lot of emails suddenly coming in and it was all good. You know, they weren't particularly stressful emails, but a lot of inquiries, a lot of stuff I had to deal with. And I felt pretty stressed out all day. Um, and when I later looked at the sort of the, the reading, my heart rate had just rocketed. <laughs> um, and I just thought that's just from having been sat in front of my laptop and dealing with lots of emails. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, fascinating, really, that what that can do. I mean, um, that, that sort of feeling uh, it is um, now expected because I don't have to now travel to you to meet you. I can send you a text message it's it's that instant you know expectation that is so easy to communicate with someone now so when you're on your emails or when you're on your facebook your messages and whatsapp there's an underlying tone of you know they just send me a response i don't really have an excuse really that to to, to not respond that fast like straight away there's not really because i don't have to travel you know 100 miles by foot to see that person or whatever like it's uh, yeah but, 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 yeah there is an underlying tone of that Definitely. And uh, something that we discussed um, a few days ago with um, Colin, the digital detox coach, is having to actually really now instigate self-discipline and choices of how you give that your attention and how you manage those notifications, how you do or don't respond to those things. Um, and, and that's taking a hell of a lot of yeah, self-discipline, control um, and, and, and boundary setting, I guess um and and that's sort of was a whole level of things that we didn't have to do before um but talking of technology i'm just going to double check with people listening can they hear us okay because i know we had a couple of interruptions um it, can everyone hear i'm just making sure that people can I've got a wave so that's that's hopefully all right <laughs> i think that's kind of sky rise yeah okay i think we're all right if, if, if we're not someone type and let us know <laughs> yeah so um you know, some of this is answered naturally as we talk, but, you know, the next key question I have been asking is what does, uh, oh, thank you, Skyrise, brilliant. Um, what does nature mean to you? Um, and with that, has that changed in any way during this year, which has obviously been a very different year for most of us? Now, okay, and it's a good question. Um, nature to me is pretty much everything that's that i you know i i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to live without it so that's it is it is everything for me and then the second part i would say is uh change now it's uh even more i feel like i now feel like i need to protect it more and is that um because of all the different things we're talking about already that nature is under threat has that become more apparent this year because of what we've been going through or i mean it, it is it is under threat um I, w- I would suggest that the fact that um even during the pandemic more people are going out into nature some of them not going out with the knowledge of how to treat it right they go out they camp they throw trash everywhere they burn forests by accident because they don't have to do fire in the right place you're not supposed to do fires there anyway and uh like things like this are just uh, examples of uh, i think there's a there's a big education uh, needed um although it's a very simple thing but there are rules there in parks and places for a reason 
Um, and these conservation is very important. And I think if most people, like said, if I said to most people, I said, okay, imagine a world with no green space, and there's no, nowhere to go. How would you feel about living in a world like that? I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't want to live in a world like that. Um, well, yeah. there is a devil was advocate out there. <laughs> too much, too much well, yeah. some incredible theory <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's true and 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 um certainly i mean we saw it in the news um but particularly as i've you know I've sort of mentioned for my partner is a conservationist responsible for some nature reserves and he and his team of uh, wardens rangers um spent an awful lot of this year just kind of dealing with antisocial behavior um litter picking um uh, damage limitation and that's tremendously sad to see that increase so much. Um, and it was really hard for him and, and all his colleagues uh, and, and for me to listen, not to get angry at that, um, not to get frustrated and irritated and really want to blame people. And, and, and you know, it's OK to let some of that out in, in the right way. But then realise it's that bigger problem, as you said, it's an education problem. Um, it's our system. It's how, a sign of how disconnected we are from it. Um, and not really realising, um, you know, it's not entirely purposeful. And even when perhaps there's individual actions that are purposeful, that still is indicative of a, a bigger societal problem, I guess. Um, yeah. Which feels yeah. pretty big. Oh, yeah, it is, it is, it is a bit of a, a, bit, a big issue. I mean, in terms of like with education and side of things, um, just from my own experience, um, not, not as an expert here, but I find that people from, I guess, like more private schools or in countryside areas, that when I meet them, they, they know what to do with nature. They know how to treat it, things like this. Um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite interesting. They're, they're kind of more aware. And then I've got friends who lived well in the city. One of them I'm, I uh, w was in our English Channel team. And I remember he said to me, I've never even walked in woods before. And it was like 21 years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, depending on where you live, where you're from, especially the UK, there's different levels of education on, on the outdoors. But I tend to find that people in the, in the countryside and, uh, and maybe more the private school areas that where they take them into forest schools and stuff like this as like different activities. They're kind of more aware of what's going on. But um, I guess as more and more city life is growing, more and more people are born in cities where there isn't much green space. I mean, some people live 10 minutes uh, bike ride from a green space or like half an hour walk from the nearest park. I mean, it's very, yeah, for those, they might be, they might see something on Instagram, someone doing a fire somewhere and thinking they could just do that. And then they'll just set a fire and then suddenly all the trees are going down and they're like, oh dear, you know, there, there's that, there's that because it's not being taught in schools. Um, well, I don't know. In well, yeah, I think it, it becomes, um, as you say, it's a geographical thing, um, but it's also a socioeconomic thing of, um, you know, inner city and funding for education, um, accessibility to schools, um, you know, and, and, you know, schools, you know, are, are chronically underfunded, as I understand it. And again, I'm not an expert in the area, but chronically underfunded, um, under pressure all the time. Um, and, and most don't have that luxury of being able to, you know, go and do something like forest school or a green space. And yeah. and I think that's, you know, comes back to, you know, I've had conversations with people that are working in sort of those inner city areas and certainly like Ellen from Nature as a Human Right. Um, again, about that access to green space and, and for well-being. And equally on an educational basis and it all ties in and you know those very people that are in the inner city that don't have green space and, and access to well-being and don't have the time to think about things like the luxury of self-care um, are equally probably not in an environment where you know education has as much funding or, or connection to that green space so it becomes quite a the more I think about it, the more I talk about it with people, the, the bigger it is and the more it comes down to actually systems. Um, um, and yet as individuals, you know, there's things that we can do um, and trying to get that balance, I guess. Um, but with that, then you said you um, work, yeah, you're the trustee for Mind Mental Health Charity. Um, did you want to tell us a little bit more about that and what Mind do and how that maybe connects to to time in nature or if mind's been doing anything with time in nature yeah and um, so m mind itself is is a is a huge huge network um and there is a national mind that governs 
multiple mines like outlets uh, for different regions. So I, I'm trustee of one region. And um, yeah, I think um, Mind has been involved in, in a lot of the sort of outdoor stuff. Um, there's been a recent emphasis on sort of getting outdoors, getting fit, getting physically healthy as well as, as a way of helping the mind, which is something that everybody's kind of aware of. Um, and then mind does quite a lot of different sort of programs like that. So my, my name is hearts, which um, I'm trustee of, uh, we started a new program called get set go. And it's just to bring people who have poor mental health to slowly give, gather themselves and get back into exercise. So there's little programs like playing football, hockey, or, or uh, going, going for a walk in the woods or, you know, stuff like this. There's loads of little things going on like that. And um, small groups that are organized by the charity. Um, and, yeah, so there's, as the pandemic has, uh, as, 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 as the pandemic has come in, the rise of mental health is, 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 has gone up. And um, a lot of people uh, and service users, of, of course, would, you know, they talk about how the outdoors helps them a lot. So there's new programs and big initiatives being made in mind to sort of support people with using the, the nature side of things. But also in, in mental health charities, there's so many other ways people help themselves with their mental health, such as, Know, arts and crafts or music um things like that drama acting like, like there's so many different ways you can you, you can release and, and stuff like that and help help your help your mental health but i think nature is an important part and could be a key one for for a lot of people so um that's that's definitely being grown right now yeah. and i guess with the various adventures that you've done you've probably had a real um full confrontation with nature really and, and and it's all its elements from the climbing the mountains to yeah. rowing across oceans i guess there's that must bring a whole new connection and uh i guess respect for the power of nature yeah i mean it it, it can be your worst and best friend at the same time and um, like when you're out in the middle of the atlantic and there's just a huge swells of like 20 foot waves and uh you realize actually those waves are coming towards you and uh, and they're being powered by a huge headwind, and and you're not actually moving anywhere for days and days. That's that that plays on the mind, and you don't know when when it's going to end. Like when when are we going to get back to better conditions to move forward? And um, so you're just stuck in the middle of the Atlantic, just rowing against this wind and not going anywhere. So it can be you know a bit of an enemy, but also it trains you to be quite resilient in those times. So you when you're I find that when I immerse myself, they, there is a double-edged sword like. I could treat it as, oh, you know, this sucks. I hate this. This is so negative. Like, you know, this all, all the weather wants to do is just hate me and push me back and make everything hard and maybe even accidentally kill me. Hopefully not. Um, but the, uh, the actual, the other side of spinning it is it's building my perseverance, my resilience. It's building up my strength and my skills. And then when I do face something else, um, like quite mundane, like a, I don't know, discussion about uh, who's, who sent that email that was awful or something like that. Um, yeah, it just puts things into perspective a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, yeah, yeah. imagine it with the 20-foot yeah. swirl of a wave yeah. versus an email. Yeah, but yeah some people absolutely. In my uh, workplace or in the office, uh, they go crazy and ballistic about very small things, I find. And then I tried to compare their reactions to our reactions when we were facing almost de death in a storm. And I was like, I think we were actually calmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it forces you to, I mean, it's certainly we've talked about in some of these chats about what our, our anxiety is about and our flight, on, flight or fight system, our nervous systems ramping up for very real uh, natural threat. And that was our survival and how that's kind of skew if now that our, our danger tends to be an email or, or more, less tangible things than that tiger chasing after you in the traditional sort of primal example i guess being back in nature and battling across the ocean and the the crazy waves and the wind is what our nervous system was perhaps originally for so so i wonder yeah if that somehow explains the, the ability to do that although i think i'd still prefer an email <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but there's a good little uh, science uh, science paper in there for someone they fancy yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, what was your uh, favourite, this is probably a difficult or a common question, what was your favourite adventure um, with regards to being out in nature for, for that? The first big one um, that I ever did, 
the first one that really got me hooked on like doing big outdoor endurance challenges and things like that was when I started swimming the English Channel. Um, the first, the first instance, like kind of talking to people about it and then, then saying that you need to, cause you're not allowed to wear a wetsuit. You just wear, you know, just not regular swim, swimming costumes. The water is about 10 to 15 degrees roughly between there. Um, when we did, when we did the channel as a team, I think it was 11 degrees. So we had to immerse ourselves in cold water lakes to uh, on play or sea to train for it. And then when, when, yeah, that's when it all kind of, I would say, yeah, that was my best moment because I kind of realized that when I was swimming for the first time in this cold water, I felt what I didn't know was, you know, hypothermia coming on. But at the time I, I, I was like, oh, I'm shaking. My hands are clawed like this and I was feeling quite cold. So I quickly got out um, and I only did about 10 minutes, to be honest. And then it kind of got me to the realization was like, wow, there's, you know, there's a bigger state at play. You know, nature is a, is a really big deal. And it kind of opened my eyes uh, to, to it in that sense. But it also got me kind of hooked into into doing things because like this because it, it felt very challenging and different. And I felt when I was in that water, completely immersed. You know, you're 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 so one. You're at the water level with nature. You know, you 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 have not. You you literally just focusing on your stroke, focusing on what's in front of you. You haven't got time to think about anything else. And yeah, it was that was when I got hooked. I think. Um, yeah, and that was my favorite one, I guess, the, the journey to getting there. And, you know, eventually we got up to doing two hours or three hours in, in the water and able to withstand the cold. Uh, it just took building up and, and uh, taking our time. And uh, it also taught me to do a bit more research. <laughs> <laughs> All good life lessons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, I, I brought um, a friend to uh, to watch us swimming to make sure like we had some support. So that was the best decision ever um, on that day. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that uh, like hypothermia could come on set, but I just I I've never experienced it myself. Wow. Yeah. Again, it puts it all into perspective, doesn't it? Um, and that power of nature. Um, uh, when I was speaking to um, my guest last night, who um, experienced the full force of a strong hurricane, again, it was some not dissimilar, um, I guess, conclusions or experiences in that, just putting things into perspective and really being in the present and here and now and, and potentially life and death situations too. Um, but there's something about that that maybe gives you some, well, the word he used was clarity. Um, that's Have a very agree? good word for it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Give it, I'm giving him a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mike Thomas. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Isaac, um, with all that we've said and talked about, um, the final question is what advice would you give others and i guess that's you know in general from we talked about mental health and connecting to nature but also maybe anyone that is perhaps considering doing something a little bit more adventurous as well what what would you say what would you say to them yeah i would say probably my best advice for any anything if you if you're in that feeling of life change like you want something to change you're you're, you're a bit unsettled or you're feeling restless or you want something to change I, I always go back to how I, when I want to do, deal with that sort of side of things is I just put everything that can, you know, give me some form of action away. So I'll put the screens away. I'll put, like I won't talk to anybody and I'll just go out into the outdoors and I'll take a notepad or paper and just write down what's in my thoughts and just get it out. And then you actually find that the thing that you're looking for, you already have and you know what it is. It just needed to get through the noise. Mm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's in there already. You know it really. You've just got to get through the noise and hear it and listen. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you so much. That's a, a lovely place um, to end it. But before we do, um, please let people know how they can follow you and what you do okay. or anything you've got coming up or anything else that you want to let people know. Okay. Yeah. Um, with pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess if you Google my name, you'll find IsaacKenyon.com. It's my website. And then from there, you can find all my social media and stuff uh, if you wanted to connect and chat with me. And uh, my, my next adventure is um, a, book, a team called Blokes on Spokes. Again, I think if you Google Blokes on Spokes, you'll find it. 
um, but also you can search on online. Uh, we're, we're just we're kind of growing a social media presence at the moment, and this is this is a big passion project for uh, the environment and mental health, um, and it's a big cycle ride by packing world first. And uh, yeah, and if you wanted to maybe I guess listen to a bit more about the mental health outdoor balance, I've got a TEDx talk on YouTube you can check uh, look at which is brilliant. Definitely recommend that for everyone to watch as well. Yeah, I'll make sure I put all links and things as you do. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Isaac. Really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pleasure. Um, take care. I'll see you soon. Thank you. See you. <laughs> bye, bye. Lovely. Ooh, inspiring. I might not be rowing across the uh, Atlantic Ocean anytime soon, but definitely yeah, a, a good reminder to get outside at least. Um, but thank you everyone for watching and bearing with us with a couple of um, connection issues. But um, let me tell you what we've got coming up. So we've got tomorrow night, 8.30, so back to 8.30 p.m. Um, with Leanne Clayton, um, who I said earlier works with young people, mental health, forest school, is training to be a forest bathing guide. Um, and then um, over the weekend, got a few um, different um, guests going on as well. So um, keep an eye out.